Hi guys, this is our second lecture or the second part with our civil design drafting. In this part, we'll talk about the road design. From this point onward, we'll start working on the software. And before each session, we have a quick theoretical introduction like this one now to prepare you for the terminology for the components that we're going to use in today's session on the uh, software. So in the first session, we will be dealing with uh, the first session of the second part of our course. We'll be dealing with rural roads, so country roads or rural road design. When we talk about country roads, that means we are talking about roads with high speed limit. In other words, that people will be driving on these roads where they have their cruise control on and uh, less attention comparing to driving onto an urban road in a suburban area. Therefore, there is parameters, there are parameters that we are using to design these roads to make sure uh, the uh, safety of the driver on the road and the capability for the driver to control their vehicle uh, driving the road. And that would be applied obviously for smaller vehicles and larger vehicles. In other words, components we'll be discussing in this part, if we're designing a high-speed road, what would be the radius for a turn, for example? When the road is turning, what would be the suitable radius for that turn? Because we agreed each turn is a um, arc shape. So that will have a radius for that turn. What would be the suitable radius for that particular speed, for 80 kilometers, 100 kilometers, whatever speed that we have? Also, if we have a vertical profile like this or a vertical curve, what we call it, as you can see, the road goes up and down. What should be the suitable parameter? Won't be a radius. It would be a parameter K value for this vertical curve to enable the driver to see enough distance ahead of them and to uh, provide comfort on the road. So we've got a few components are important. These components are important for high speed roads that will apply for highways, rural roads, country roads, all of these type of roads, put it that way, the road where people usually they turn on their cruise control and they have less attention for the road. So they're not paying enough attention during the driving. Therefore, there are minimum parameters we should ensure for the safety of these drivers. As a starting point, before we get to that, part of the road design. As a starting point, we need to establish how to model our surfaces, how to start the basics of our model. So to, as you can see this road here, before we start designing this road, we have to understand, understand the topography of that area. We have to model this surface here around so we can lay the road on top and we can start designing that road. Modeling the surface, as we agreed from previous lectures, any surface is made of group points. Simply, we are importing survey points. Our surveyor will go on site, will go on site and measure different points at different locations, and they will measure the heights of these points. So the important parameters that we should receive from the surveyor are the northing, easting, elevation. These are the basic important parameters as well as we usually receive description for the points and the points numbering. In other words, any of these points, let's take an example, this point here, in order for me to, or not to me, for the software to locate that point at that location, the software has to understand what is the northing value. So how much the distance on this axis here, on the northing axis, and how much the easting value, as well as how much the height because as you can see, these points, they vary in height and that will create our topography. The height, we call it elevation, as well as that will give it a description. If that road, for example, a ground or spot level, you may have as SL, as spot level. If that point is part of a road, for example, the crown point, we talked about the crown point in a road. If you remember, let me just remind you, road ground point so the center point of a road let me just 
on a cross section. So if I look at this cross section here, that point there, the highest point of the cross section, we call it the crown point of the road. Okay, so let's look at that. This line here represents a group of crown points. So each, for example, for these points here, they may be uh, given a description of CR as crown. We will see some of those in the practical example that we'll be doing today. So the point I'm trying to make here, each one of these points should have these important parameters. Distance on this axis in the easting direction, distance in the northern direction, and elevation, which is the height, a description to describe what that point represents. Is it a spot level? So just a spot level for that land there or the ground level? Or is it a crown point for the road? Is it a curb point where the curb is on the side of the road? So we've got a few different points description that we usually deal with. After we enter this information into the software, which is, as you've seen, the way to do that, if I go to Silver 3D, entering these points, simply just importing the points to the software. All what we're doing, we're making the software reading the points provided by the surveyor. The surveyor have already been on site and came up with these points, locations and heights. On your learn page, on this tutorial here, wait for that to open so tutorial 2 road design this is the video I'm working on the introduction but you've got these videos that we'll be working on for the practical work of the um, uh, the software for the road design that we have to do part of that at the bottom here I entered the survey data okay so you've got this file you can download this file into your computer which is the same file what I gave you in the previous lecture. It's one of those called survey points there. It's the same file. Usually these files, they come back from the surveyor in a format of CSV files or text files. CSV, it's the uh, type of Excel uh, file or text file. So let me just actually, let me download one of those. Let me actually turn, turn on this for you. So if I scroll down, and I'll download this file so you see what's the content of this file. So when we open this file, we'll find mainly four columns. Each one of these columns that contain information, most of them are numbers. The first number refers to the point number, simply point one, two, all the way to the end. The second and the third gives us northing and easting, and that information usually you get it from your surveyor so our surveyor here told us the second column is easting the third column is northing so i've got point number easting northing the coordinates and easting and easting and northing and the fourth column gives us the elevation z the height and the last column d description for the point so that gives us the description of these points here drain for dr for example different type of descriptions okay so why this is important for us to understand because when we enter this information to the software so if i would to add these points to the software i'll, add, I'll go to points and import points and if i go to importing that file i just downloaded and the second question the software will ask me what format you need these points in so it's important to use the right format this is the format the surveyor told us that we have the information in that file point number east north p e n z d point number east e for east n for north z for height d for description because for example First of all, if I import those, and by the way, you can read this information here, the same way you could have seen it on Excel. And when you import that point, another point I would like to make that 
turn on all files because sometimes just on the text so you can't see that file if you couldn't see that file because you've got this the file type on text so i make sure it's on either all file or csv i usually keep it on all file so i can see them all we already imported that file so i don't need to do it again and secondly uh, it's important to see them here and let's have a quick look if i import them how these points will appear waiting for the software now it's done to see them all ze zoom to extent and enter these are the points so if i just try to go to select these points and go to 3d viewer just waiting for them to select them all that's the problem working with too many points usually is a, a longer procedure so if i try to look at them in 3d as you can see i'm trying to look at them in 3d these points they have elevations they they form some kind of a surface they have elevations they have x and y components which is the northing and easting components okay so you don't need to do this to review it in 3d because the minute i, I still hold the, the mouse button and the shift button to be able to see this the minute i take off that those will disappear that's why usually we don't do that for points we wait until we have the surface and then we can view these points the point i'm trying to make here that if we import the points correctly we will get the correct shape let me go back to the home view which is the north facing up just waiting for the software if I import these points correctly, that's the shape what we should have seen. But let's undo this and show you if you import the points incorrectly, what may appear on your screen. Just undoing those. So we don't have any points now. Let's import all points correctly, uh, incorrectly. So start with to import the points from the top here as we agreed all files i have to see so in order to see all the files here click on this and let's say by mistake i clicked on the wrong description if you notice here now the northing easting sorry the northing component is reading the wrong information which is the point number one two three northing that's sorry the easting northing is reading also wrong information elevation is wrong so we've got almost everything is wrong on that file the way we import it but let's see what would be the outcome i'm waiting for those to be imported and that's done close and again z e and that's the outcome so it's completely wrong outcome therefore please try to avoid these problems we have to understand correctly the description of this file in order to import them correctly to our server 3d to the file in server 3d okay so i'll just undo all of this and we will continue with our work here so going back here as we agreed a surface after we import the points the software what we'll do will connect these points together as you can see here will connect e each three points next to each other into a small surface as we agreed three points are the smallest geometry to create a surface that's why this type of surface we call it triangular surface it's made of triangulations of triangles group of triangles together when we have these points in a way they're not in this instant here what you see all these points are organized in a nice grid this is we call it a grid surface but not necessarily what you've seen for example the points i just i imported to server 3d these points to be always in a grid therefore what we call them triangular irregular because they're not on a grid irregular surface tin okay or network so a triangular irregular network tin surface okay so if I will take this back to SketchUp, let's say this is our surface as we agreed. If I look deeply what's behind the scene of a topography like that, if I will show you the hidden geometry behind it, you'll find 
lots of triangles and that's where we agree these triangles there it's not necessarily to be in a regular arrangement like what you can see here they could be irregular and that's the most common area uh, form of forming a surface we call it triangular irregular network okay so a tin surface if i hide this network here and what i'll do in order for me to measure the heights of this surface i need to get to a point to deal with contour plans or contour lines for you to understand contour lines if i would try to measure the heights of this surface at certain increments in other words let's create flat surfaces like this what you can see they are flat surfaces stacked on top of each other and let's see if i intersect all these surfaces with this surface what will give us as an outcome so if i look at it from the top and i'll just move that to be here all i did i put the all these surfaces on top of that surface and what we'll do now i'll ask them to intersect together so I intersect faces with the model i'm waiting for the software to do that okay let's have a look if i move that that's what we get what this is telling us that will tell us this is the intersection lines between these surfaces the group of these surfaces and this surface here this means each one of these lines guys here it's in one height because it sits in one surface of dice intersecting with one surface of dice so each one surface as if let's imagine these surfaces as a group of knives stuck on top of each other and we slicing the topography here into different slices these slices here and these lines we call them contours this is the way that we describe a topographic area so usually if you look at a topographic map if i go to here if i go to rather than street view topographic view and let's zoom on zoom in to one of these hilly terrains there you have it these are the contours what you were saying is seeing in there let's go to a slightly less crowded location so we can understand this topography there there you go for example when i look at this topography here i'm seeing there's a, a ridge here or a peak a the top of a hill at this point here and the height of that is 330 for example when i was doing the contours here let's give each one of those surfaces a number for example this is zero this is 0 0.5 1 meter 1.5 2 meters so what we are saying each one surface of those is increased from the one before at a half meter so the highest line here will be for example so we've got 0 0.5 1 meter 1.5 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 and a half so for example it could be not accurate there but doesn't matter for example that's 8 meters height this is at 0 and this is 8 meter height so each one of those will have a number representing how much the height of each one of these lines the contour lines if I go back here so these are the contour lines this is telling me this is by looking at the shape the minute I see an enclosed smaller circle that reminds you that should remind you of this circle here so if I look at it from the top this circle here the smaller enclosed circle that means this is the peak of that terrain or that topography there as you can see always on the peaks you should have that smaller the smallest enclosed circle in between the peaks here we see the curves rather than closing they suddenly change direction so i can see the curve coming this way this curve should be in theory continuing to close so if i look at it from the top this curve here should be in theory continuing here and closing another circle but all of a sudden changes direction goes to another 
circle around another peak that means this will tell me this is the valley area here the same thing here this line should be going all the way to enclose here but all of a sudden it will make a sudden change in direction the same as this line here sudden change to go and wrap around another peak area that means this will tell me there's a valley here and that's true look at it there is a valley here there is a valley there so by understanding these contours it's important because when you look at this contour from the top you'll be able to understand lots of information this will be step number two we'll be doing on software on the software we will create the surface from these points we will show you later on in the videos how to do that and then we start understanding and analyzing that surface but to go back here so the, for the contour points i would like just to show you a few important features that we should look at them before we start working on the software so now we understand what is the surface made of and now we understand what are these contour lines as we said as if we're slicing the land into different layers and then we lay them on top of each other each one layer look at those each one layer has the same height all the points at that layer have the same height in fact for us really it's not the entire layer it's just the outer line of that layer has the same height all the points at that outer line here they have the same height from the point zero so a contour are the graphical representation of the lay of the land how the land is laid on top of each other that will show us the degree of slope on site and it's all it's usually related to a side datum in each site or any contour plan should be related to a zero point now that zero point guys we don't really take it as zero we usually take it as 100 or 1000 it depends on the scale of the site why do we take it at 100 or 1000 because let me go back here if i take this point as zero that means all of these points will be positive 2, positive 4, positive 5, wherever the heights upward. But what about the points here? Those points here will be negative, And usually we don't show any negative values for heights on our plants. Therefore, what we do to avoid this issue of showing negative values, we take a datum or a zero point as 100 for example for a smaller site if the site was large and we've got large variations in height we may take it 500 or 1000 but usually let's say that we took our height datum here as 100 these will be 102 104 106 for example and anything below that for example will be 98 96 so we start going downward but we are still in the positive values that's why we usually the benchmark we call it temporary benchmark we don't take it as zero we take it as a given value now the contour representing uh, as we agree the contour line each one of these lines representing the trace of one elevation so any point on that line it has an elevation of 1700 contour plans are important for us they are one of the most important planning let me just planning aid for the design in the, during the design uh, conception that means they are very important to us and one of the important points for that contour plans it to help us understand the slope on the site by looking at the plan from top without have to visualize it in 3d by looking at it straight away we should understand where as i agreed where the peaks are where the valleys are where we should avoid running our road because that will cut through a large hill or it will be in the water course where the flood may happen you remember the video i showed you earlier in this course showing a flooded road so that is one of the main things that we can avoid by understanding contour plants so it's important for us to understand where the peaks and the valleys it's important to understand where is the steep slope and the graduate or moderate slope i'll show you now in a minute how can we visualize and differentiate between the two 
Uh, that will uh, help us to, to understand where the areas will need cut or fill. What we call it excavation is cutting of the ground where the road has to cut into the ground or where the road sits above the ground where we have to fill underneath the road, provide some filling uh, earthwork. So, how can we see the peaks? As we agreed, when I see the smaller enclosed circles, these small enclosed circles, usually they represent the peaks or the um, ridges, what we call them, the highest points on the hill. These are the two peaks. So this is a contour plan of a 3D view here. The valleys, as you can see, this curve here should be forming an enclosed circle, in theory, with that line there at the height of a 10 but then all of a sudden at that point it will change direction and wrap around the second peak here the location where these curves they change sudden direction here as you can see them so the area where the two contour lines merge together so i've got this contour line here around this peak and that contour line they merge together into one line that will tell us where the valley area is or when that contour line just changes direction and run in the opposite direction and wraps around a second peak we can say this is the valley area slope as we agreed a slope could be steep slope or gradual slope or moderate slope so how can we visualize that on contours if i look at this hill area i'm looking at it from the side here if i look at it from the top where the steep slope is you should see these contour lines very close to each other when the gradual slope or where we have moderate slope or fall that's where you start seeing these contour lines spaced more away from each other let me go back to this 3d view you can tell from here all these contour lines if i look at it from the top all these contour lines because that's a steep slope here very close to each other whereas if you look at this contour lines here if i look at them from from the top you can see them spaced away from each other it's always about how much space i have before the height will change so i've got more space before the height will change comparing to the area here so it's a ratio between the horizontal distance and vertical change that will give us a slope contour plans we use them in many applications for example you worked on this you should have worked on that during your basic drafting when we work on the side drainage for example it's important for us to understand the contour plans because if i look at this contour plan for this house here residential design i can see First of all, you should have a benchmark somewhere here, temporary benchmark, usually referred to as TPM, and that is usually at 100. As I said, we don't use zero, we use a value, a fixed value that would be our datum. So if that's at 100, I can see all the spot levels here and all the contour lines, that's the 99 for example, all these values are less than 100. That means this side, just by reading these numbers, I know this side, this side is lower than the street, is falling away from the street, is falling to the back. And you can see it here from the elevation on the side. This is the street level and this, the house is falling back from the street, is lower than the street. And why also it's important for us, for example, I'm reading here the finished floor level of this house is 98.7. Whereas the contour line here, for example, is 98.4, roughly, this contour line. And that is 98.5, and that's 98.6. Doesn't matter. So we've got those. So that's, these are the contour lines. That tells me the bench level and the finish floor level is higher than the contour lines or the existing ground lines. That means this area here would be all fill area. This area here, I'm looking at it, I've got the point at the spot levels is, that's 98.5, that's the contour line of 98.5, and the contour, uh, and the finish floor level is 
98.5 so anything further this way that means it's higher than 98.5 so that's between 98.5 and 99 so let's say that's about 96 uh, the level is 96 here whereas my bench level is 98.5 that's 98.6 sorry and my bench level is 98.5 that means this small area here I will have some cut for the ground I don't want to um, complicate things for you here but what I'm trying to say that by reading correctly the contour lines and our project levels for the finish floor level or the bench level you should have learned those from basic drafting that will tell us where the areas where we have to cut or fill or what type of earthwork we have to do some features and properties about contours and contour lines the closer the contour lines the steeper the slope we established that contour lines can join or merge only where we have a vertical cliff in other words how can i win is the only one case that i can see these lines they turn into one line so they overlap over each other if that would be just a sudden drop so if i'll be standing here and then i've got a sudden drop which is a cliff area you will see all these lines merged into one line or they stacked over each other because i've got from a 50 to zero drop so all these lines will be merging into one line or will be joined into one line contour lines they can't cross for example the line of 30 and the line of 40 there is no point there's no point it will be at the height of 30 and height of 40 at the same time. So it's impossible to see two different contour lines with two different heights, they cross each other. And contour lines must be continuous. So all these lines, as you can see them, they should be continuous. Sometimes they do if we don't have all the survey data, but generally speaking, that they should be continuous. Again, just another view of this is a the perspective view of a few hills next to each other with a road crossing through these hills that road is cutting uh, this is the area where i told you the road will be cutting through the hill and this area the road will be higher than the natural ground so we have to fill around that area Underneath that filling area, as you can see here, we have to create a small pipe to drain the water from the higher point to this point here. If I look at this with the contour view from the top, all these ridges, as you, can, as you would expect, you should see these smaller enclosed circles. That tells me these are the ridges. And if I connect them all in one line, we'll call it the ridge line. This is the ridge line, which is what you see if you are standing here, that's what you see the top or the peaks of these hills there. That will be the ridge line for them. And where we see a, the contour lines coming very close to each other, that means this is a steep, this area here is a steep slope. As you can see here, we can see areas, for example, look at this kind of cliff area here. It's a steep slope, uh, fall or slope from this point to that point. As you can see, the contour lines, they come almost, they merge together into one line. Um, you can see this is where the cut area, which is what we're showing it here. This is where the fill area, what we're showing here. The point, what we're trying to make by looking at this, we should be able to understand that, for example, at the starting point, this is the valley. When I see these points, these curves they change direction and rather than wrapping around this peak they wrap around that peak that means this is a valley area and which is that valley as you can see here this is a valley area that will create water that will collect water from all this area here into running through under the road that's why we have a bridge here and the same thing will happen around that area there that's why we should have a pipe underneath or cover underneath this road area here. And we have to visualize because I have this part here, which is at a 
higher height comparing this point here higher than these points around it that means i should expect some cutting within this area and the opposite here this area here is lower than this point and lower than that point that means there's some filling has to happen here so with experience you get to understand it more what we'll be doing in the software the advantage it will show you all in 3d so you can visualize it correctly and we've got some tools that will show you how to work with on the software to obtain this information or what we call it analyzing a surface there are some other components here that i'm showing you just by looking at this contour plan what observations that you can make again this is the crest lines or the ridge line between the ridges and this will tell us this is a valley area that's where the contours will change direction and that means all of this area in theory should be catchment area catchment area that means this is the area will be collecting the rainwater and directing all that rainwater to run through this valley area or or this water course what we call it okay that means i should straight away by looking at this road center line here i should straight away understand that i should have a pipe going underneath that road and i will have definitely i will have a fill area there and i should provide a pipe to allow the water to cross from one side to another and by understanding the size of this catchment and when the hydrology engineer will do the hydrology design that will allow them to calculate the exact size of the pipe to allow for the water to cross underneath the road this is all i don't want to complicate things too much for you this is just for your own reading i'll put those uh, slides on the learn page you can read through them if you would like um, this would be it for the contours i'll leave you now with the other videos start watching the uh, procedure how to do that on civil 3d before i do that let me just check if i can find the road I need to show you these cut and fill areas when we do the design for the cut and fill. Just open one of these files for you. When I was talking about the cut and fill area, you'll see it in a minute. Let me just show you this surface that we're creating this is the design that we are we will be working on this is the road that we'll be working on this is the road that we'll be designing this is an example of the valley area or the area where it's the lowest on the topography we have on the surface that we have and when the road crossing that area we're expecting the road as you can see the road is higher than the surrounding ground so this means that down the track, the hydrology engineer will be designing a pipe to allow the water to cross from this point to that point. And in the areas where we have the road is lower than the surrounding topography, that's when, when we design it and that's what we'll be designing to minimize. Simply we do that to minimize the road vertical uh, profile so we don't have to make the road goes up and down many times because that will not be a good design what we're trying to compromise on to keep it as flat as possible we create in some areas fill and some other areas we create cutting into the ground we call them the cut and fill and that's one of the main tasks that we will do at the end what we try to do in engineering design for the road design we try to balance the cut and fill in other words we try to the amount we cut from this area and that area for example it will be the same amount that we will need to fill in this area therefore whatever the machineries are cutting from that area we transport it to this point here and then we fill it and we compact it that way we don't have too much excess or we need to ship more soil on the ground okay or uh, filling material on the ground so this area we call it the cut area and that area we call it the fill area if you know that i think that should be enough for you guys to make a start on this design that we'll be working on simply we'll be working on creating a new road between two existing roads we're starting from the ridge the crown sorry the crown point of these roads 
as we agreed this line here this is the crown and that we've got a small intersection that has a crown point we're connecting between these two crown points to that road there i'll leave you with those videos uh, after we complete these videos we will start talking about horizontal alignment the first set of videos are designed just to show you how to create the surface first before we start designing the road that's our step number one and what information when we um, when we model the surface how can we refine it make it as accurate as possible step number two step number three what information that we can obtain from this surface that will help us for our design thank you guys